Well, good morning, Purpose. Good morning. How y'all doing? Y'all, it's going to take me a second to get situated up here. Uh, I got an empty seat. Anybody want to join me up here? Anybody want to join me? <laughs> Angel, everybody. Give it up for Angel. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank All you. All right. It is a great day to be in church. Uh, yes. We missed y'all last Sunday. If, if you noticed, we weren't here. I hope you noticed we weren't here. Uh, we were actually in uh, Dothan, Alabama. I don't want to brag, but it's the peanut capital of the world. And we were there. Uh, it was amazing. It was a fun time. Uh, uh, we, we were with our friends at Church of the Crossing, uh, the, the Dowdies, who were great friends of ours, John and Brandy, some of our best friends, uh, got to speak to the church and um, you know, God is doing some amazing things in Dothan, Louise, Dothan, Alabama. Alabama. Oh my gosh. Bama. Can you believe like I preached the day after we got oh, beat by bad. Alabama and I was kind of thankful that we got beat cause it made things less awkward for me. Um, cause I was like, I, I'm going to rub it in their faces and everybody's going to leave their churches, their church. Um, but it was great. But we came away from that Sunday, just so encouraged and excited to get back to purpose uh, cause we love our church, you know, it's great being with friends, but there's no place like home with our church family. Uh, so we're so glad to be here, but, uh, doing things a little bit different this morning. We are uh, having a little thing called vision Sunday, yes. uh, vision Sunday. And so, uh, I think we got some, uh, shirts and some mugs to give away. We got a little giveaway. Okay. Which one, let's see. So what we got first. A shirt. You okay. A shirt. First? What size? Okay. Small. Small. Okay. We need, we have a size small to give away. This is a, a limited edition. Uh, yeah, Danny, put your hand down. Um, limited edition purpose worship, long sleeve shirt, small to, uh, it's your birthday, you know, this month. Oh. We only have one hand up other than my son. Oh. You don't wear a small. Um, Lewis, come on down, buddy. Lewis. Lewis Dinkle, everybody. There you go. There you go. All right. Medium. All right. We've got a medium. Same thing. Any, any mediums in the house? First hand was up was, yeah. Come on down, Laney. Laney? It's you. Laney. Yes. It's you, Laney. Elena. There you go. We're going to do a t-shirt cannon. There you go. Okay. Next size. Extra XL. large. Okay. This one is one of my favorite shirts we ever did. It is an earth tone large. Uh, let's see. Uh, someone really young and good looking. Really young. And looking. That's you, my dude. There you go. Saw that left-handed throw right to you. 2X. And they say I wasn't an athlete. 2X. <laughs> Who's got the 2X? Oh, was that you, man? 2X? Come on, come you want to admit that? Oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. This is where we become family, okay? We got 3X in the house. <laughs> no, 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 no. I didn't say that. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said three mugs. Three <laughs> mugs. Oh. I was wondering why we were becoming okay. family. So what we have here is <laughs> the remaining mugs from downtown Baton Rouge. You can't get these anymore anywhere. I don't care who you know, you can't get one of these. If you don't have one of these mugs, I want to see your hand. Where you? Oh. That's you in the back, right there, down the middle. I can't throw. I could throw this. I could. Here, you want to bring it? Shaf is going to bring it to you. All right, one more, one more, um, two, more. two more. Okay, it's your first Sunday with us, um, and you want this mug right here. It's yes. you in the middle. Come on, my dude. Okay, one last one, and then we're going to get on with the business that we got to, get it to do. Um, who else wants this mug? Let's just do that. <laughs> Let's just do that. You right there. All right, catch. You ready? I'm just no. trying. All right, all right. Give it up for the winners of the good job. Good job. of the clearance items. You did a good job. That wasn't too awkward. What's up? You're up, baby. Oh, I You're am. up. I just I gotta take a sip. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I was supposed to pray. We Let's don't pray. Have to, who cares? It Let's pray. Matter. All right, pray. it was me. I'm earlier. sorry. I was thirsty. 
All right, let's pray. Father, we love you so much, and thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity to gather in your house, Lord. I pray that you'd speak to us. God, that you would help us to leave here challenged and changed, Lord. We need encouragement from you, Father. Uh, We love you. We love the house of God, and I pray that you'd speak through us this morning. We love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Now now already. All right. We are really excited about this morning. Just so thankful for you. We're thankful for what God is building at Purpose. You know, when we think about this house, we think about how this church purpose is God's house. It's his idea. It's his vision. And we're excited about the future. But we're also so grateful for right now. Like we're so grateful for everything that God is doing in our lives and in our church. 2023 has been an amazing year at Purpose. I think about how the year is coming to a close, but it's not. That kind of excites me a little bit to think about like God isn't done working yet. Sometimes in our minds, we can kind of accelerate to the end of the year, even the beginning of a new year. But God isn't finished working in this year in your life and in our church. He has more that he wants to pour out. There's more blessings, there's more favor, there's more hope for each one of us to encounter even in this year. But God's dream and vision for our church is that we would be a place within reach for every person to find their purpose. Um, We thought about how this is the year that God brought life to three words for our church and for us, three words that really just sum up who we are, it sums up what God's doing, it sums up what God wants to do in our church, it sums up the heart of our house, and its purpose happens here. These are three words that we just kind of obsessed over and felt like God was speaking it into our church and into our lives, that wherever we are, purpose happens because purpose is within us. We thought about and we're reminded of um, the way that God brought purpose alive in our hearts and in our lives, like that moment that we surrendered our lives to Jesus, that moment of surrender is the moment that God ignites and sparks purpose Mm -hmm. within all of us. So for Chad and I, that was in the early 2000s, that was um, over 20 years ago that purpose was ignited for us. We think about how purpose happens every time we notice and respond to the needs of others. Purpose happens when we start to let God or allow God to use our lives to impact other people. Not only do we see purpose in this, but we start to provide other people with an opportunity to experience purpose in their lives too. Um, As we kind of thought back for our lives, for our journey, our faith journey with the Lord back in the early 2000s, like I said, we kind of thought about how we just kind of said yes to every opportunity that came our way. I think about through our 20s and through our 30s, we said yes to some crazy things. We said yes to being children's pastors. We said yes to being addiction recovery pastors. We said yes to putting an Airstream trailer behind our house for men to live in to get free from addiction, just believing that they could have hope, that they could experience freedom in that way. I think on that one, you said yes, because I'm the one that asked if we could do that. (laughs) Yes, it seemed like a good idea. (laughs) It's kind of crazy to me. (laughs) We said yes to leading kids' church in a local school. We said yes to small groups and outreaches and leading missions trips. Just however God wanted to use us to build the kingdom, it just felt like, yes, why not? Mm. Let's do it. Just It's such an exciting adventure for each one of us to serve the Lord and to be on this faith journey with him. Um, As we continue just to say yes to all the things, God started to spark and ignite more and more purpose within us and then within others. And we felt led to begin restoring purpose ministries in 2015. Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And that was, go ahead and tell a little bit about that. Yeah, so Restoring Purpose Ministries, that's our ministry to uh, men and women who Mm -hmm. struggle with addiction. You know, we we help men and women find help, the help that they need. We walk families through that process of of, of choosing, you know, walking that path. That is a hard path, and it's Mm -hmm. a lot of people, I just don't know what to do. We help to kind of help them make those decisions, Mm -hmm. and then we have a a facility for men to commit to 12 months to living in and uh, help them, you know, uh, with employment, help them get their lives on track, help them build a new life so that they can be successful. And uh, as far as 
for the women. We've partnered with several uh, other sober living homes that we're able to you know, help place women in those places as well. I love that. It's yeah. a big deal. Um, soon after that, we felt God starting to lead us to say yes to launching and building a church in our city that was all about purpose. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I, I was reminded, I just thought about this. This week I was talking to a friend of mine. He had this idea about reaching veterans. And, and uh, I, was like, I was like, man, I was like, you know, the whole reason we call, named our church Purpose Church was because I had a friend that was a, um, he's a veteran. And he, I was like, he was just in his house by himself with no purpose. And it occurred to me, it was like, he just needs something to do with his life. Yeah. And I started like, hey, man, help me press watch for this widow. Help me do this. Help me do this. And, and then that's where Purpose Church was birthed in my heart. And our, and our hearts was just seeing my friend just who is an incredible human being wasting away with no purpose. Yeah. It's so important. Purpose is so important for all of us. Um, so, so we're a part of this uh, incredible church planning organization. That's kind of like how we came to be is through an associ- it's called the Association of Related Churches. And, and they've just been incredible to us. They've helped us so much. They trained us. They've equipped us. They, they helped to uh, launch us. They've uh, helped to sustain us. How many, how many of y'all know sometimes you need that bailout from Big Brother? Like they've been a bailout for us a few times. Thankfully, not in a very long time. Uh, but they're for you. They are for our church. They love us as a church. They love our city. And so we're ARC Church Plant number 746. 746. So they've so far planted over a thousand life-giving churches all over the world. And, and because we're a part of this organization, you're a part of all those churches. I mean, imagine all the people being impacted on a weekly basis, on a, on a, on a daily basis that you're a part of reaching because we're a part of that. And so uh, we launched in downtown Baton Rouge on 3rd Street at the Lyceum Ballroom on January 21st, 2018, uh, which I think this is super cool. This year, we celebrate six years on that same day, January 21st. Uh, so we'll be celebrating, uh, you know, six years. And the Dow- my friends, our friends, the Dowdies will be with us from Dothan, Alabama. Um, then you have to say Alabama that way. It's required. Uh, but we had an incredible two and a half years in downtown Baton Rouge. Loved it. Loved working there, being there, uh, you know, just building the kingdom of God there. I mean, we had people driving in from Central, West Baton Rouge, Gonzales, all over the place. We even had one family coming in from uh, two families from Pierre Park, like, right. yeah. or Park. Is it Park or Part? Part, P-A-R-T. <laughs> Um, but we, man, we love the homeless community downtown. We knew them by name. They were a part of our church on the dream team. Just, it was incredible. Uh, but you know, through the uncontrollable circumstances of the pandemic, uh, we were forced out of that location. Uh, and, uh, we had nowhere else to go. And I know they told everybody, uh, it'll be a three week lockdown, but the reason it took longer, cause I was praying, Lord, we need more than three weeks. We got nowhere to go. Um, And so we immediately went to online services, which we didn't even have an online presence. I was like, and I don't want to do that yet because we won't be good at it. So within a matter of days, we were online as a church. And uh, and then God miraculously uh, opened up the door for us to build out this space that we're in right now. And then in the meantime, while we were building this out, a friend of mine, you know, of course, my friends are a little strange, bought a bar and... uh, (laughs) And um, it, it was uh, called the Oasis. Now it's the uh, shed on Burbank. They have this huge uh, outdoor patio, which was perfect for the COVID situation. And, uh, and it was, yeah, easy for us. It was a free place to meet. So I think we actually, I found a picture from, yeah, there ain't nothing like a Bud Light sign behind you when you're preaching the word of God, right? So it was, it was Bud Light on one side, Tito Vodka on the other. Uh, I had this one lady, I met her. She was like, I've been watching your church online. What's the significance of the Bud Light sign? I'm like, I think it's advertising and marketing. I, I, just, I didn't put it there. You know, we're just meeting in a bar, you know. Uh, but over the, past, the last six years, I mean, we've been a part of, of purpose happening all over our city. I mean, in so many lives. Yeah, you know, good. everything that God has built over the past six years is because of you, you know, because of faithfulness, because of generosity, uh, your heart for Jesus, the heart for, for people. Uh, you know, purpose happens in your life and then it spreads to everyone else in, yeah. in your world. That's why we're like clinging to that phrase, purpose happens okay. here. Yeah. Uh, Hebrews 12 points to so many others that came before us and, and lived alive with purpose. Yeah. 
It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses uh, to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. Uh, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Amen. Apparently, I can read better sitting down. Maybe that's why Josh sits down when he preaches. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't trip up one time on that. That was impressive. Um, but purpose happens when we keep our eyes on Jesus. Yeah. When, when our focus is on Jesus. Yeah. It happens when, when lives are rescued from addiction. Uh, purpose happens when someone gets free from the bondage of depression or anxiety. Yeah. Right. You know, it happens at Kids Jam or Kids Church. Yeah. Uh, when we provide hope for families at Christmas time. Uh, it happens when we encounter Jesus. When lives are, are restored. When people choose Jesus. It happens on Sundays and it happens on every other day. Yeah. Purpose happens. You know, it happens when we gather in this room and uh, when we go out and live out the word of God in our daily lives, purpose is happening. Yeah. Uh, purpose happens within you, with you. Yeah. And, um, so you know, wherever you are, purpose happens. Right. Uh, Psalms 57, 2 says, I cry out to, to God most high, uh, to God who uh, will fulfill his purpose within me. Amen. Amen. I love it. God is the one that fulfills his purpose yeah. for each one of us, and it's incredible. So our vision and mission as a church that we decided to graffiti all over one of our walls <laughs> when we moved in. So we all know it's love God, love people, live in freedom and purpose. And I just think about all the ways that God has fulfilled this mm -hmm. in so many lives over the last years. I think about ways that we carried out this vision, like in our very early years as a church, just our little Sunday services downtown, worship nights. We had one, if you were there, you know, it was an epic worship night outside in Town Square downtown. Um, we spent many Sundays at a school called Thrive. It's a boarding school for kids. And we would go Sunday evenings and just make sure that as those kids came back to school for that week, that they knew that they were loved, that they were treasured, that they were not forgotten. And that was so special. I think about outreaching at dog parades downtown and live after five and the downtown Christmas festival. I think about how many times we would set up like a pop-up lemonade stand at the lunch hour downtown just anything we could to make sure people knew that they were loved by God. Um, in our early pre-launch days, we were able to buy and provide a handicapped van for one of our church members. Um, I think about in the last couple of years, we've just consistently allowed God to help us say yes to the things he would put before us. Like, God, what are you leading us to? How can we fulfill purpose? How can we fulfill this vision? And in our recent years here in this location, I think about our purpose groups and worship nights. I think about our youth services and our youth events. We are so grateful and really want to honor Christina and Charles Coleman. Y'all, yes. they are incredible. Y'all give it up. Yes, and it is actually Charles's birthday today. Happy birthday, hey. Charles. He thought I forgot. He thought I forgot. Happy birthday. He's over there pouting. <laughs> That's funny. But we're just so grateful that the Coleman's provide community for our middle school and our high school kids to be a part of, to be together. Yeah. Like there's nothing better than that. I'm yeah. so grateful for them and for what they do every single Sunday and then lots of events also throughout our weeks. Um, I think about prayer and fasting in this room at the beginning mm, of every yeah, year. Like for yeah. me, that's one of my favorite times to like reset life, my mind, my spirit for yeah. the year. So I can't wait for that to get here again. I think about Serve Saturdays at Flannery Park and Kids Jam and Friday Night Street Outreach and Assisted Living Worship and Bingo with the worship team has been amazing. I think about Rouse's Serve Takeovers. Yeah. They love when we come, we start bagging groceries and pulling in carts and making sure, again, that people just know that they're loved, usually by handing out happy packs, which if you know, you know, happy packs are amazing. Um, in addition to all this, we've watched how cool God is and how strategic he is, how he's really shaped us into four main all-call events every single year. He's helped us to carry out our vision real strategically this way through Be the Church Sunday, which if you know, again, you know, we shut down services one Sunday every spring so that we can go and be the church to our city. I think about Serve Day 
Every year, it's usually going to be the hottest day of the summer. Sweet That's what usually yeah. is picked. And we get to um, just plan several serve events, and we serve with churches all over the world on that one way just to make one incredible impact on yeah. the world. And so we love that, of course. We love Trunk or Treat and then Giving Hope. We'll be here before we know it, so mark your calendars for that. But we just believe and see that fulfilling our vision happens in so many expressions that are even just beyond a Sunday. Like yeah. purpose is happening way beyond what is happening on a Sunday. But Sundays are incredible. They're foundational. Mm -hmm. We get to come in. It's kind of like a reset for each of us for our week. We get to sit under incredible and biblical teaching. Um, we get to build relationships. We welcome in the lost, the hurting, the forgotten. But purpose is so much more than Sundays. Amen. We have three foundational scriptures that our vision is built on and birthed from. So when we talk about and think about we love God, we love people, we look to Mark 12, verses 29, 31. Jesus replied, the most important commandment is this. Listen, O Israel, the Lord our God is the one and only, only Lord, and you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor yeah. as yourself. Amen. No other commandment is greater than these. Fantastic. Love, love God, mm -hmm. love people, and then live in freedom mm -hmm. and purpose. Um, Galatians 5 one says, so Christ has truly set us free. Mm -hmm. Now make sure you stay free and don't get tied up uh, again in the slavery to the law. Uh, and then I love this scripture so much. Uh, I feel like somebody needs to hear this this morning. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 2.10 for we are God's masterpiece. Like, like, take that in. Like, you are God's masterpiece. If you're down on yourself, if you're like hating on yourself, you are a masterpiece. He created us anew in Christ Jesus so we could do the good things that he planned for us long ago. We are called Purpose Church. Uh, you know, as, as a Purpose family, we're called to back and support and push forward the vision that God has given us. It's, it's not our idea. It is the Word of God, and that's how we have come up with the vision for this church. It's strictly from the Word of God, and uh, the greatest thing that we can do individually and all together is just to grab onto that vision, uh, you know, and, and back and support and pray and believe that every person would love God. You know, that they would fall madly in love with Jesus, that they would give their whole heart to them, that he would completely transform their lives. And they wouldn't just stop there. They would, hey, I love people. You know, I used to not be a people lover. I personally was not a people lover. But man, God changed my life and I love people. It always blows my mind when someone describes me as, man, Chad, he's, he loves people. I'm like, man, that's crazy. I love God. I want people to love God, to love people and to live their lives in freedom and purpose. You know, living in freedom and purpose, it starts with settling your past and not letting your past determine your future. Like, you know what? I got to make peace with that. I got to make peace with my mistakes. I got to make peace with the, the pain that was, was given to me, the unfair situations that I've endured, the, the seasons of pain, of loss, of, uh, of maybe lack. I got to settle that so I can step into the fullness that God has for me and so I can live out the purposes that he has for us yeah. and for me. You know, our vision is clear and we are uh, more excited and filled with so much hope uh, just to build God's house, to reach our city at an even greater capacity than we have. Uh, we're called to build his house. We're called to be a part of building this house. And it is an honor to serve Jesus. It's an honor to serve people. Yeah, Amen. That's good. I love it. So we are going to share just some specific things that we feel like God has given us as a church as we continue to build, as we continue to move the vision forward. So number one, we build our lives on Jesus. I love this scripture. It's 1 Corinthians 3, 10 and 11. Because of God's grace to me, I, lay, I have laid the foundation like an expert builder. Now others are building on it. But whoever is building on this foundation must be very careful, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one we, have, we already have, Jesus Christ. Our foundation is Christ. We're all about Jesus. We always will be. That will never change. He is our rock. He is our foundation. We build solid on a foundation of Christ. Amen? 
it's important that the fundamental beliefs that we build our life on, like our thoughts on and ultimately our house on, are in line with the word of God. So that, that comes in play when we talk about the church, but when we talk about our own lives, our own house, the things that we build our lives, our thoughts on, that they're built on the word of God. I think about over the last six years as a church, we've all worked tirelessly with intentionality and with an incredible team to make sure that our foundation on Christ is solid. On a lot of days, it's been some difficult things, some painful things. I think we've had a lot of challenges as a church. And then just individually as church members, we face some tough things, but we've built our house for him and on him. And because of that, there's so much joy and beauty that comes out of that as we just continue to build and we continue to persevere in all that God has for us. We operate in the strength of Christ. Again, I feel like this is so key, like for all of us to take for ourselves, like as people that love Jesus, hey, we operate in the strength of Christ. Why? So that when hardships come and they will come, when struggles come, when challenges come, we don't fall, we don't give up, we don't compromise. We are solid on Jesus and who he's called us to be. We never stop building our lives on Jesus. Amen. Yeah, amen. Amen. So good. Um, if you could sing, you could sing that line from the song. Why don't you do that? Yeah, no. I build my life no. on Jesus. <laughs> um, the second thing is uh, we live according to the standard of God's word. Uh, 2 Timothy 3.16 says, All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. Mm -hmm. it, it corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we live our lives uh, uh, to the standard of the word of God. It's our guide. It's our help. Yeah. It's what helps us to, to live our lives to please him. Um, I, I was talking to my mom earlier this week, and she loves when I make fun of her in church. Uh, so I always try to work it in there. Um, but I was talking to her. She, she brought up a particular denomination that we were a part of as kids. And I'd never, she'd never told me this. And this isn't telling on her. Uh, it was just her honest truth. She goes, well, we chose that, that, that church because we were allowed to drink and do all this stuff. And I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh. She goes, isn't that stupid? I was like, you know, we can't read the word of God. And, and, and like, you know what, that, that scripture doesn't suit me. I'm going to skip over that one because that doesn't suit me because I want to do that. Man, the word of God should challenge us. We don't read the word of God for others. Oh, they need to read that. I need to read the word of God to impact my life, to, yeah. to change me, sure. to help yeah. me, to correct me, to lead me, to guide me and help me. Um, I'm always trying to challenge people. Hey, live your life to, to the, the standard of the word of God. Like you're not that person anymore. You need to change some things because the word of God says this. You need to live your life that way. And, and that's our, our hope is that we would just consistently live our lives uh, for God and, and, and honoring the word of God and the things of God consistently living our lives um, uh, set, uh, set apart from the rest of the world, right? Yeah. Our, our life, you should be able to look at our lives and be like, oh, they are different. I see what you, I, yeah, now, now I can see that you are, are a believer because your life is different. You do things differently than others. You know, we got to spend time with God. We got to spend time in his world. This, his word, this isn't one of those churches where, hey, come to church on Sunday so you can hear the word of God and, and get you right for the week. No, we need to be doing that every day of our lives, spending time in the word, learning the word. I don't want you to just hear from me, from Angel, from, from Josh. I want you to read read the word of God and know the word of God and have it tattooed on your heart. So you know the scripture and it can change your life. Amen. Amen. I went off script for that whole thing, you, baby. You're, you're just gonna have to work with we're me. Good. We're good. <laughs> uh, number three, we have a unique, necessary and yeah. needed thumbprint yeah. in our city. Yeah. We believe that. We do. So we see that. We have the most incredible church culture. Culture Purpose is the most welcoming place for someone to walk into. Like, doesn't matter what they've been through, what they've done, what they're, what they're going through. They can come in here and be loved and welcomed in. Part of our culture is that you can belong before you believe, meaning you can serve on a team, you can go on outreaches, you can greet at the front door, 
for. But of course, our hope, our prayer, our belief is that the Holy Spirit will work in every one of our lives and bring us revelation to believe in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. As a church, our worship is incredible. Yes. Our community is refreshing. Sunday messages are relevant, and when applied, they will change our Amen. lives. Our outreach is next level, all thanks to our girl, Haley Freeman. The Y'all goat. give it up for Haley. She's okay. awesome. She's our outreach director. Yes. She's also our daughter. She is. She's, she's our daughter. She's also our daughter, our oldest. Um, <laughs> she's our oldest. <laughs> But she's just phenomenal, the way that the Lord brought her into this house and the way that she just obsesses about how we can make an impact in our city is just so needed, and we're so Mm -hmm. grateful. As a church, you love Jesus and people well. You welcome others in. Purpose is truly a no-snob zone. Amen? So don't be coming here trying to be snobby. We're not going to have it. (laughs) You have fun serving Jesus and others. You forgive and show grace. You make a difference for God. You bring glory to him. You love deep. You go out of your way to notice the needs of others. You show up, whether it's an all call or not. You show up strong for purpose groups, for outreach. You show up strong for each other. I hear it so much. Like you being there for a church member, mm-hmm. reaching yeah. out or something. We, we didn't even know. We didn't yeah. even know that was going on. But as a church family, you take care yeah. of other people. Y'all showed up strong for Trunk or Treat this year, and we can't wait for giving hope. Something that I've just seen in my life and I've learned is that showing up is life-changing. Yeah. It is all because I just showed up and showed up and kept coming that God completely changed my life, Mm. set me free from some things, helped me and allowed me to live in purpose and put life-giving community around me all because I just showed up. Like sometimes we just can underestimate the simple, like I'm just going to go just see what God does. Just showing up is amazing. Um, Outreach and local missions is obviously a huge, huge piece of who we are as a church and of God's heart for this house. We are unapologetically all about outreach, all about local missions, all about reaching our city for Jesus. And we see that this is the greatest way that we will move our vision forward and have so far. But bringing the love of Jesus outside these walls to those who aren't here yet is so important to us. And then we think about too, as we go on outreaches, we're going to reach people who we know they may never come here, but we can still reach them with the love of Jesus. But we believe God has bigger dreams for us than we can dream or plan for. Um, We talked with our dream team this morning and I was just thinking about like Vision Sunday, so exciting. It's so exciting to think about all God has and to talk about what we know he's placed before us. But how many of us know that there's so much more that we don't know, that God sees that we can't even see yet. And his plans for us are so great. A scripture that we love, we believe it for our family, and we believe it for restoring purpose, and we believe it for this church, is 1 Corinthians 2, 9. It says, no eye has seen, Mm -hmm. no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. I love that one. That is our favorite scripture. Uh, Number four, we run with purpose in every step. Uh, 1 Corinthians 9, 24, I love this, this passage. It says, don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one gets the prize. So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. Uh, they do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. Uh, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. You know, we run with purpose in every step, intentional and strategic. Uh, Galatians 6 says, hey, let let us uh, not grow weary of doing what is good because at just the right time, we'll reap a harvest if we don't give up. We run to win. We don't give up. Uh, We're all about Jesus and we're all about others. You know, we give people a place to call home and a family to be a part of. And, uh, you know, we run with purpose so that others can uh, start running with purpose as well. You know, others. We're all about others. It's so important. Like who in your life is just like waiting for an invite, right? 
to, to be invited into church family, wanting to be a part of this family. You know, uh, uh, who would see a social media post that, 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 that we post and, and you share it and they see it and they're like, ooh, that's my sign. I'm coming. Yeah. I'm coming to be a part of that. I need that. Uh, we need to run with purpose in every step. Good. Um, well, our next one, we got two more. We're doing okay? Yep. Doing good? Number five, we are full of vision and full of faith. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. We see with faith things that God has for our future. We have vision and dreams of a dream center. We have vision and achievable steps to get there. We're working on a food trailer and a thrift store trailer. We're working towards grant writing to help provide these resources so that we can make a greater impact on our city and so that we can see this vision fulfilled. We believe that God will provide more than we need so that there is an overflow of resources to help our city. Yeah. We believe not only for prosperity in our church, but we believe it for you. We believe it for your life, for your family, for your dreams. We are a church that's full of vision and full of faith. Amen. Amen. Uh, and number six, um, we're going to go five minutes over today. That's we, not really number six. Uh, number six, we are positioned to walk through open doors. Uh, look, yeah, for real, we might go a little bit long today, but vision is so important. Yeah. It is so important. Um, Matthew 7, 7 says, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And everyone who knocks, uh, the door will be open. You know, we have vision just to be positioned, to be able to walk through doors that may open. Uh, I remember when uh, Angel and I first felt called to ministry, we went and met with our pastor and we're like, hey, look, we just feel called. And, you know, at the time uh, we were making pretty good money, you know, for us in our early 20s. We're like, oh, my gosh, we're rich. Uh, we weren't. Um, uh, but, you know, we're making decent money. And, and our, my pastor's advice to us was, hey, live your life in a way that if a door opens, you'll be able to walk through it. Like, don't, don't uh, financially overextend yourself. Uh, make sure you can walk through because if, if you you don't, um, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to open through a door, even if it opened wide open. Yeah. You know, I think it's a challenging thing for all of us to consider. You know, are you living your life in a way that if a door opened to your dream, because your dreams are different than my dreams, but if that door opened, are you in a position to walk through and, and, and enter into that dream? Or in other words, are you positioned uh, and ready to walk in your God-given dreams? You know, whether that's a dream of marriage or a dream of a certain job or a dream of a career, a dream of starting a business, a dream of starting a family or adoption, uh, a dream of ministry or, or a mission, uh, a, a godly mission, you know, through a door of your dreams, if it open. You know, our vision will always be seeing lives transformed. And we've seen so many lives transformed and, and there's so many more to reach. Um, you know, but it takes all of us who have been impacted by the vision of this house to, to not just uh, partake in the vision and the, and, the, and the outcome, but to grab hold of that vision and be a part of moving that vision forward. Uh, it's so important to, to grab hold of vision. That's why uh, we dedicate a Sunday just for vision. You know, the vision of this house, it is paced by the generosity of this house. And it takes all of us to get there. It takes everyone giving their time, their prayers, uh, resource. You know, God loves Purpose Church. It's his vision. Uh, and, and a large part of us being sustained as a church and being able to walk through all the doors we have is through so many financial miracles. And there are so many that, I mean, I, I lost count on, on God's provision just coming in an unexpected way. Uh, but I see us as a church all getting behind the vision of this church like never before and moving this vision forward like never before. Um, you know, maybe you've never taken a step to, to be a giver. Maybe you're like, man, I've just never done that. Maybe that's a step that, that, that you can take because I'll tell you, there is nothing better, more fulfilling to being a part of, of investing in the kingdom of God. You know, when, when you see a light, like Mr. Charles coming up, you're like, I have a small part in that. 
There's nothing like it. It's so life-giving to all of us. And, and we're all called to tithe and to give offerings. Malachi 3.10 says, uh, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse uh, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there won't be enough room to store you know, so we're really excited about the uh, miracle offering. It's coming up. And look, if you're like, man, I don't know about that tithe thing. Just a few weeks ago, like three weeks ago, uh, gave a message on tithe. I encourage you, go on YouTube, go on Facebook, look it up. I think it was called Bling Bling. Is that the title? Pretty sure that's what it was called. Uh, yeah, real, real mature name. Uh, you can tell where I come from. Um, but yeah, check that out because I, I, I communicated what that even means. Because you may not be, I don't know what that means. Yeah. I encourage you to, to look at that. Uh, but the miracle offering is coming up on, on December 3rd, and we believe it will be another miracle. Yeah. God did a miracle last year, and I believe he's going to do another one this year. Uh, you know, purpose has been built and sustained by the generosity of so many people. Uh, and you're a part of the many. That's right. Um, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So on December 3rd, it's one of our all calls. It's an all call uh, to give whatever the Lord uh, places on your heart to give. You know, Malachi talks about the tithe. Uh, the miracle offering is, is over and above the tithe. It's like, man, this is other than my 10%. This is other than the tithe. You know, so let's spend the next month praying, Lord, what would you have me give? Don't wait till that day and be like, oh, babe, grab the checkbook. Uh, like, what you want to do? You know, like preparing your heart. Like I'm, I'm giving joyfully. I, I've decided in my heart what God has laid on my heart. And you're like with a smile on your face, like, Lord, I give this offering unto you. Uh, let it be an intentional moment. And um, I, I believe it's going to be a turning point for each one of us. I think it's a, a faith turning point. I think it's going to be a turning point for our church. We've come so far over the past six years. And uh, God has been so faithful in 2023. It's been an incredible year. But I, leave, I believe 2024 is the year. Everybody say the, the year. The year. It's the year. I believe it's the year of overflow, of prosperity, a year of increase, uh, you know, where the, the pace of the vision of this house is, is, is accelerated. You know, I love those words, overflow, prosperity, increase, you know, because there are so many more just like you and me that, that they're just going through life thinking, is this all there is? If this, is this all there is? Like right now, I was thinking about that. They're at the house right now. They're at the grocery store, you know, and man, we have the hope of the world and, and we know that the hope is in Jesus and, and we have the hope of the world to offer them. And we're going to look for every new creative way, opportunity to reach out to them and say, you know what? Jesus loves you. And we want to welcome you to be a part of church family. Amen. It takes overflow, it takes prosperity, it takes increase to bring more hope to those who desperately need it. And when the door of opportunity opens as a church, we want to be able to say yes. yes. When a door opens to love more people, yes. When a door opens to spread more hope, yes. When a door opens to help one of our own church members in need, yes. When a door opens for disaster relief, yes. Our city is hurting, and thank God we have the answer. Amen. Amen. We have the hope of Jesus. Yeah. Our vision is his. And we have an opportunity and privilege to carry the hope of Jesus to as many others as possible. There's still so many that need to know, that need to hear. I think about doors that opened this past year that we were able to say yes to because of your generosity, because of last year's miracle offering. I think about our Giving Hope Christmas experience. I think about Christmas gifts for small of our own church families. Yeah. I think about countless outreaches, which we have talked through. I think about helping dozens of men and women get into rehab to reestablish their lives. This year, I believe God allowed us to be more strategic, more intentional, yeah. and more consistent with outreach than in any other year yeah. in purpose history. I think about in past years, it was it was a challenge to make gains, to be strategic or to make gains, to be intentional in the face of pandemic or in the face of another disaster. Um, but even in the face of those cha challenges, God has been so faithful mm -hmm. to allow purpose to be on the front lines of helping the hurting, of serving people. But this year has been a year of reaching people with strategy, 
with intentionality, and again, with consistency. We've had the honor of being a consistent presence in communities, and it is a privilege when we get to know faces, we get to know names, we get to know someone's story, we get to know their needs. In addition to local missions, we love being partnered with Children's Cup as a church. We have a team going out to one of our Children's Cup care points in Belize to serve in April. And so we're excited for that opportunity. We love being partnered with the Los Angeles Dream Center. If you know us, you know how much we love the Dream Center. We plan to get another trip on the calendar soon. This is such a special place to us early on in our walk with Christ. It just changed our lives to go to Los Angeles to see what they're doing in their city. And then it inspired us to bring that to our city. So we look up to them. We love sending teams to them and learning from them. We love being partnered with a ministry called MAP 1040. This is Pastor Luke Walter's ministry. Many of you have met him, but we value and support all that they're doing as well. But God has helped us to fulfill the vision of purpose well up until this point, and we cannot wait to see what the future holds for us. Amen. 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 We have God-given dreams to yeah. further the vision of this house. You know, dreams that will increase our ability to help others find Jesus, for for them to find the hope of Jesus, find freedom, to find purpose. You know, in 2024, we see God continuing to build our lives and our church to a greater capacity than ever. You know, for God to lead us closer to the big dream of having a dream center uh, for our city. You know, we see God providing resources for those next steps that will bring us closer to that. And then we have some more obtainable dreams uh, that will, you know, help us to um, express Uh, some of those same aspects uh, to our city through a a thrift store trailer and a food truck. You know, we have dreams of of having these things. um, Silence. Um, (laughs) Silent button. Um, You know, our ability. (laughs) Tell them I said hello. Um, But, um, you know, increasing our ability to feed our city, to bless our city, to help our city, to rescue people off the streets. In coming years, we do see a dream center being in our future where uh, after school programs for kids and under-resourced areas, food distributions for f- uh, families in needs, adult programs, Bible studies, enrichments, just to teach o- home ownership and all the things that people just need to you know, like help. Like, let me help you. Let me help you change your life. Uh, you know, 2024, we see our, our church being uh, becoming even more established in our city. We see our services continuing to invite more people into the presence of God and, and spreading the hope of Jesus all over. Yeah. You know, we see services in, in, inspiring us to live our daily lives in a way that honors God. We see more people, um, you know, saying yes to discipleship and, mm-hmm. and, and deeper freedom, deeper discipleship. It happens through purpose groups. Yeah. We see those growing and expanding. We see it happening in growth track. And, and uh, we're going to start a, a leadership class at the beginning of next year, raising up leaders to take specific areas of our church to the next level. And we see God aligning purpose in every way and every area to be positioned to walk through doors. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Uh, two more quick scriptures. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. Uh, that's why this is so important. Proverbs 29, 18. Uh, when there is no... Prov- oh yeah, this is a different translation. Same scripture. Thank you. Uh, this is the passionate translation. Uh, when, when there is no prophetic vision, people quickly wander astray. But when you follow the revelation of the word, uh, heaven's bliss fills your life. You know, vision is so important. It is so important. Um, and, and I woke up in the middle of the night with this thought, and I had to rewrite it because apparently I'm from Alabama when I'm sleeping. You know, so it's like unintelligible. But it says, uh, there's nothing more exciting. No, these are my words. I can't say it like it's about. There's nothing more exciting than a vision to start something new. Like when we started Purpose Church, it was so exciting. Like everybody's like, yes, what could it be? It's going to be amazing. But then I had this second thought, there's nothing more fulfilling than that vision accomplishing what it was started to accomplish. You know, that's what this is all about, moving the vision forward. And, uh, you know, uh, vision is important. It's not just important for us as a church. It is important as a church. And it's important for you to know what our vision is, because what am I even sowing into? But it's also important for your life. 
You know, it's, it's important for our church, but it's important for your life to know what is the vision of my life? What is it all about? It can't just be about punching a clock. It's got to be about so much more. Yeah. This is what I do, but this is what I'm about. It's the vision that I have for my life. Yeah. And so what I want to do, I want to close in prayer and, and just that God would reveal fresh vision, you know, and dreams godly ambitions for all of us, people that we want to reach, you know, dreams of, of impacting our workplaces or impacting our neighborhood or impacting our city. Or we see a, a people group that's struggling and, and it seems like they're forgotten a passion to reach them for Jesus like never before. I want God to, to birth vision in your life for you. We have so much vision for our church. Haley, Josh, our team, we have vision for our church, but I want you to have vision for your life that will motivate you, that will propel you to get up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm doing this because I want to see God move through me and in me. I want purpose to happen through me in my life, in my circle of influence. So let's all stand up. I want to pray for you this morning. Thank you for your patience for giving me a couple more minutes this morning. Father, we love you so much and we thank you for these incredible men and women. Lord, I pray that you would just fill our hearts, our souls, our minds with vision, with ideas, with, um, with godly vision to move the hope of Christ into lives around me. Lord, that you would give us ideas on how to reach others for Jesus like never before. Father, that you would help us, that you would equip us, and that you would give us dreams to reach others. Lord, I pray that we would leave here encouraged this morning, hearing your voice feeling purpose, feeling cause, feeling your anointing to do what you have called us to do. Father, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you've never said yes to Jesus, um, uh, Angel's going to pray with us. She just found out. Uh, what a great step. You know, like, okay, vision. That sounds great. They got plans. I need plans. Well, it starts with saying yes to Jesus or rededicating your heart to Christ uh, again. So would you lead us all in prayer? Let's pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I ask you right now to come into my heart, to change my life, to give me vision for my life. Help me to serve you and love you from this day forward in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come on, let's worship.